Today on The Joy of Editing, I'm pulling out Topaz Studio 2, my creative toolbox. Today I want to show you how we can take a photo and turn it into a digital sketch using Topaz Studio 2. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome back to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today I have to pull out Topaz Studio 2 again. I can't resist it. This is uh, episode number 64 of my Creative Toolbox series. We're going to use Topaz Studio 2 to turn this into a sketch look. This is going to be a lot of fun and it's easy to do. We'll be using a look inside of Topaz Studio 2 to help us out. So let's get started. Last weekend, I was down in Pittsburgh, PA, down in the city, taking some images with my iPhone. I love to take images of the buildings with my iPhone. It's nice, it's quick, it's easy, and you know what? It's non-intrusive, so I love shooting with the iPhone when I'm in the city. And this is one of the images that I've got. I turned it into a black and white image, and now we're going to see what we can do inside of Topaz Studio 2 to try to transform this into a sketch. Whenever I'm using Topaz Studio 2, I always like to duplicate the background layer. Now there's an easy shortcut, Command or Control J, that just duplicates your background layer. Because you know what, you may want to pull back on the opacity of your Topaz Studio result and let a little bit of the original background image show through, so I always like to do that. We're going to come up here to Filter, the Photoshop menu, and come down and find Topaz Studio 2. I'll click this, we'll launch Topaz Studio 2, and we will get underway. And here we are inside of Topaz Studio 2. One of my all-time favorite filters in Topaz Studio 2 is the Impression Filter. I'll be using that today because, again, I want to give this image a look that it looks like a pencil sketch. And I don't often do that, so what I'm going to do is use a look. Now, these looks come with Topaz Studio 2, and I know you can't get Topaz Studio 2 anymore, but if you do have it, and I know a lot of you out there have it, and if you do have it, use it as long as you can because it's a great tool. So I'm going to come up here and click on Add Look. Now take notice, we have a Look category, and right now I'm set up to Artistic. This is a drop-down, so we have all these different looks. And again, these come with Topaz Studio, too. I'm in the Artistic section, and these are all the different looks inside of there. And there are many in here. And if you're not really used to working with uh, the Impression Filter, this is a good place to start in the Look category. Let's try some of these looks on for size and see what we get. Now let's click on the first one, Chalk Pastel. Give it a second to render, and look at that. That looks really cool. When you click on a look, you will notice you have an Apply button to apply, and then you have an amount here, so you could pull back on this amount. Think of this as an opacity slider, so you could pull it back right from the start if you want to. But let's try some of these other ones here. This one's called Chalk Board Chalk. Now that looks kind of weird, right? But notice this, if you pull this opacity back a good bit, now you're getting something. Now that looks pretty darn interesting. I do like that. I'm gonna pull that back up for now. Let's try this next one out, Charcoal 2. That's promising, I like that. Here's Charcoal Sketchbook. This one's more what I'm looking for, but I don't like the texture in here. And we can keep going down here. And I'm going to jump right to the one I want, and that is this one. I think it's this one, Da Vinci Sketch 1. Let me click on it. Yes, this is the one I want. And I'll just click Apply to apply that. Now you'll notice we have a group here called Da Vinci Sketch 1 Impression. Now if I click on Impression, that opens up the Impression Filter. And notice the paint stroke is Type 14, which is these two lines that look like a pencil sketch. And the look has already set us up with this stroke. Now, you'll notice we have different things we can do. If you watch my Creative Toolbox videos, you know I talk about the number of strokes. A low amount will give you more of an abstract look. Medium, a little more defined. And high, more defined yet. But medium is good. I like it. I like everything about this, but I don't like... I like this color back here, but I think it's a little too light. I want to make it darker. So we're going to take care of that first. Let me scroll the whole way down. You're going to come down here to Texture. Click on Texture, and we'll open up Texture, and we'll scroll this down a little bit more. Now, notice it's using a texture called Paper X, but right now the texture strength is on zero, so we're not really applying the texture. We're going to apply it, but first off, let's go down here to Background Color. We're on Solid, 
Now, if I click to original, you'll see not much is going on here, right? But when I go back to solid, now you can really see what's going on here because this color coming through here would be the background color, which you'll find right here. Now, if I click on this drop down, a color picker comes up. Now, I'm on a Mac. It may look different on Windows. But notice here, you have a color wheel, so you can move this little target anywhere you want and change this to any color you want, which I think is pretty nice. But what we can also do is change the luminosity value of that color. So I want it darker. So I'm going to take this slider. I'm going to start to drag it to the right, just to darken it up a little bit. See, now that is more what I'm looking for, a little bit of a darker look, maybe something right there, and I'll click OK. And now I'm going to come to this texture slider and I'm going to take this. Let me zoom in so you can see what's going on here. I'm going to take this slider and drag it to the right. I'm going to take it the whole way to the right. See that nice, beautiful texture popping through here. It's like a paper texture, so I like that. You could pull it back if that's too strong to maybe somewhere right around in here. But I'm going to leave it up a good bit. I think I'll take mine up to about like a 0.88. How's that sound? And now let me go ahead and zoom back out here. Now, let me scroll back up, and I want to show you here. Notice the stroke width and the length are set up here to 77. You can make these strokes wider by moving this to the right or more narrow to the left. And what I want to do is stroke length. I'm going to take this and drag it the whole way to the right. Watch the image when I do that. See how the strokes change a little bit? They get a little bit longer, and I think I like that. Let's try this stroke width. Let me take it back a little bit and see. See how things change a little bit? It gets a little bit more of a pencil-y look, not quite as wide of a stroke. I'll just take it up a little bit. Now, you can eat, you don't have to drag these sliders. You can even click like this, and they'll, they'll change. And that will happen instantaneously pretty much if you do that. I might just pull that back just a little bit more. I'll click right here, and I think I like that. And you know what? That's all I want to do here. But you'll notice on the edge here, see how it gets like lighter around the edge here? The reason for that is if we come down here to coverage transition, this is set to a 43. If I drag this to the right, notice what happens. We kind of lose some of that effect. I'm just going to do a Commander Control Z to back that up a step. But I like that light around the edge there. I think that looks really nice. And next, I just want to work with one more filter. So we'll come up here and click on Add Filter. I'll use one of my favorite filters, Precision Contrast. This is an exceptional filter. So I'll click on that. But let me show you how cool this filter is because we have micro contrast. Think like sharpening and bringing out detail of your image. Low areas of contrast, medium areas of contrast, high areas of contrast. We can work with the lighting, shadows, midtones, and highlights. There's an equalization adjustment here and even some color adjustments all in that one filter, which is really nice. I'm going to start out with micro just to bring out some of the details, the smaller details in this image. So I'm going to take this slider and start to drag it to the right. And I'm going to bring it like right here at 54. See the eye up here? I could shut this layer off by clicking on this eye. Here is before and here is after. Just that one filter. Look at all the detail that popped here. Now I have to click on precision contrast again. And now I'll work with the low areas of contrast. I'll start to drag this to the right. And notice the change in the image as I do that. You see what's happening? That's way too much. So I'm going to bring this back to like right there. 0.28 and now I'll go to medium and I'll bump up that medium contrast a little bit to let's say right there 0.45 I like that and now let's work with high I'll just bring that high contrast up I'll drag it up so you can see it see the larger areas of contrast getting really dark and that looks really cool I think that's too much for my vision today so I'm going to bring that back to right there like a 0.37 maybe a little bit more I want just a little bit more let's try 0.48 now that may be too much right there. I think that's good. And now we can look at equalization. I always like to click through these. Here's low and just notice the image, how it changes. Here's medium. How do I know which one? I just click and the one my eye likes, that's the one I pick. And I like medium the best. The warm color the impression filter is using is a little bit too strong. So I'm gonna come to this saturation slider and pull that back a bit. And right there, I think that looks good. Now I am happy. And now if you left click on anywhere on this canvas area here, left click and hold, you can see there's my before and here's my after. But that is it. And I really love the way this turned out. And it was very simple and easy to do. 
I think this would make a lovely print to put in an office or whatever in a den. This is a cool image. I like it. And now all we need to do to save it back to Photoshop is come up to the Studio 2 menu and click Accept. That'll send us right back into Photoshop. And here we are. Now we have this layer right here, which is Topaz Studio 2. You can give it a name. You can further work on it here in Photoshop. But check this out. The other thing you can do is, if you want to, you can take the opacity and pull that back a little bit and let some of that original image show through if you want to. So there's all kind of options here. I like it just the way it is, so let's leave well enough alone. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope if you have Topaz Studio 2 that you pull it out and start creating. Try a pencil sketch. They're a lot of fun. Hey, if you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.